Hi folks, um, thanks for coming to the first presentation of our Spartanburg to, uh, Earth Day Festival 2018. <clears throat> uh, we have Stuart Jones. Uh, Stuart's an ordained Baptist minister and he served in churches in several southeastern states. He currently works for District 7 McCarthy Tesler School for Students with Disabilities. But he's also had a, a long-term interest in reptiles since his childhood uh, in rural, rural South Carolina. And for the past 15 years, he's been giving presentations on snakes. We're happy to welcome him here for his third appearance. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. And thank you for being here and coming to be a part of celebration of Earth Day. Because, uh, and I'm glad I can do this because snakes aren't usually celebrated. And uh, so we are a rare bunch, uh, but reptiles have fascinated me since I was a child. I had turtles, lizards, snakes growing up. Uh, dinosaurs always fascinated me, so reptiles were also a, a fascination of mine. Our neighbors, if, if, if it was anything like you when you were growing up, my neighbors would uh, kill snakes and they would hang them over trees or throw them in a trash pile. I would go and sort of observe them and play with them and... And so, you know, and I came to a conclusion that these guys would be better and more fun to play with if they were alive. And so I read every book on snakes that I could get. I learned, I taught myself what are the dangerous snakes and what are not. And so one of uh, the, one thing that uh, I think will give you some power over fear of snakes is knowledge, reading. Uh, knowledge is Knowledge is a key to it. And so I would have, I would, uh, sort of, if you see a book in the library or out in some bookstore, if you're interested, grab one. There's a great book called Snakes of the Southeast, uh, one of the best books uh, that's most re been recently published. And you'll have a color guide that shows you what all snakes. There's 52 different species of snakes just in the Southeast alone. And so they are fascinating. What I want to do quickly. I'm going to talk less, and we're going to get the snakes out and sort of play with them more this year. But I wanted to do a PowerPoint of just some of the snakes you're going to see around Spartanburg County, just so you can be aware of them. Uh, some of them are misidentified many times for the venomous copperhead, which is the only pit viper we have in Spartanburg. But uh, we'll, we'll go through these real quickly. This is the corn snake. Orange, red, yellow uh, is usually a marking for it. It has got a spear point on the head. Uh, they will bite in the wild if you pick them up. So it's just sort of stay. This is the northern brown snake. This snake is very plentiful in Spartanburg County, and this snake gets identified as a copperhead a lot of times. You can see how this little tiny snake that only maybe gets 12 inches long, an adult's about this long, but they'll flatten their bodies out, they'll flatten their heads out, and uh, they'll sort of make themselves look like they're vicious, but they're really, they don't even bite when you pick them up. But you, easy to identify, they've got these sort of spots on their back. And they come in a variety of colors. This one's more reddish, but then you have uh, some that are more uh, taupe colored, light brown colored, but they've got the little spot rows going down the body. Uh, this is a worm snake. If you've ever seen a worm snake, you know a worm snake looks like an earthworm, a big earthworm. They get only about this long. Pink belly, little teeny tiny head, little teeny tiny eyes. Uh, they're good. You want to keep them in a flower bed because they eat a lot of uh, insects. That and the northern brown snakes eat slugs. Uh, northern water snake. This is a juvenile. They get misidentified a lot as either a cottonmouth, water moccasin, or a copperhead. Uh, but there's some distinctive patterns. We're going to look at those. This is a large one, and they also flatten their bodies out, flatten their heads out, and make them look larger, make themselves look venomous. So you really can't look at the head and tell if it's a venomous snake or not, because this guy is making himself look venomous. They will bite if you pick them up. Water snakes will bite. Here's a red belly. I've got a, uh, an adult red belly. I'm going to show you in a minute, but this is what they look like when they're young. They look like a little baby copperhead, maybe. This is the adult red belly. Brown on top, fiery orange, red chin and belly. Ring neck snake. Easy to identify. Grayish, yellow on the bottom, has spots, and then that ring around the neck. That's a dead giveaway. Generally, they do not bite. We have a mole king snake, which stays underground most of its life. I never saw one of these until I was an adult. Uh, but they can get up to three feet long. Uh, they, they're good for getting rid of uh, rodents, especially moles. Here's what the, this 
mole king snake looks like. This is an adult. This is a juvenile, same patterns. This is the largest king snake we have in North America. We have it in Spartanburg County. This is the big eastern king. Sometimes, some people call them chain kings uh, for that, uh, the chain link pattern going across your bodies. We've got one here in the box we'll show you in a minute. Uh, these guys are called snake eaters. They will kill and eat uh, mammals, rodents. Uh, they'll kill and eat other snakes. Even a snake that's twice as long as this snake, uh, this snake can get this snake down into the stomach. Black rat snake, very, uh, very plentiful here in Spartanburg County. Uh, one rat snake can eat, to, eat up to 30 mice in one summer, mice and rats in one summer. So if you see one on your property, leave it alone. He's a good, he's a natural mouse trout. And this is another photo of, uh, of the king. This, uh, the, the, no, this is the rat snake. He's sort of in a strike pattern. Uh, rat snakes are fearful of humans, so they are going to rear up and they're going to bite if you corner them or try to pick them up. But they do tame down pretty easily after they, they, they're not afraid anymore and they make pretty good pets. This is a juvenile ba uh, black rat snake. Babies aren't black at all. They sort of, it takes two, three years for them to uh, lose their pattern. Uh, some people misidentify the babies as copperheads, though. Black racers, an adult. Uh, black racers, juveniles are very different. Eastern hognoses. These are the, the snakes that spread, have a hood like a cobra. If you can see, when you come upon these guys, they hiss really loud. They spread their necks like a cobra. They'll lunge at you like they're going to bite you. They'll open their mouths. If that doesn't scare you away and you start messing with the snake, he will do something else. He will roll over on his belly, stick his tongue out, and play dead. But he will also poop on you if you try to pick him up. Uh, he'll, he'll poop and then wallow in it. And that's what he does for us. So, so it really saves his life. Uh, it's called musking. Uh, it's a very nasty smell, and no predator will want to eat him after he's done that to himself. If he's got a toad in his stomach, he will also throw up on himself and on you if you pick him up. But uh, you can go on uh, YouTube and type in Eastern Hognose and you'll get to see them display all this, uh, this uh, hooding and playing dead and feigning death. But they're, they come in a variety of colors. Here's the snout of the hognose. Here's, he's hooded there. You can see it's not a cobra. So this is an Eastern Hog. Eastern garter snake is very typical, uh, plentiful around here, easy to identify by that stripe. And there is also a, a ribbon snake, which is more slender than the garter snake. And we have that also in Spartanburg. And the green, very beautiful snake, can get up to maybe th two, three feet long, like to live out in shrubs. They eat insects, but they're very easy to identify. The, this snake does not even bite. The copperhead, which I've got in this big tank in a minute, and you'll be able to see one up close, so you'll be able to identify what they are. Uh, I tell people to look for Hershey Kisses. Everybody knows what Hershey Kisses are, right? Okay, you see this? It's like a Hershey, Hershey's Kiss on the side of his body. Sometimes they're broken, and they don't look like a Hershey Kiss, but he'll have Hershey Kisses on him. If you're looking at a copperhead from the top, you'll see a... Um, I see an hourglass, hourglass saddle going across his body, wide at the base, thin at the top. But you'll get to see them in a few minutes. Also, the baby copperheads, uh, they have these two spots. Adults have it too. Two spots on the head, just like that. If you notice, the tail of this snake is green. This is a juvenile. They have green tips on their tails. All baby copperheads have it because they use it as a lure. They'll, they'll hide under some leaves and they'll stick the tail up through the leaves and they'll wiggle it like a worm. A lizard or a little mouse will come over and, to inspect thinking it's an insect to eat and he will get envenomated real quickly. And this is a copperhead. It has some spots in, these block, in, in the saddles I talked to you about. We'll see one of those. See the baby copperhead? See that green neon tip on the tail? It's very bright. You can't miss it. If, a, if you come up on a brown snake, that does not have a green tip on its tail. It's not a copperhead. Okay, here's our, here's our test. We have four different snakes. One of them is a copperhead. Who says it's number four? Picture number four. Who thinks it's a copperhead? Number two. Anybody for number two? Number four? Or number three? Think that's a copperhead? You think it's a copperhead? Okay. How about number one? 
Number one. Number one is the copperhead. See the Hershey Kisses? At the top is a northern water snake. They have bands and blotches. They, you know, they have the bands around them, but they do not look like the wide bands like the Hershey Kisses. Eastern hognose snake has a body shape typical to a copperhead, but he does not have those hourglass shapes. Okay. All right, let's do this. We'll get out some snakes now. time has evolved these colors to pretend to be a venomous snake, intending to be a coral snake. And so that's why you have only these tricolored snakes in the same range as coral snake. It's called Baptisian mimicry. And so this snake has a mask. See the mask, TJ? <laughs> see the mask? He's got his Halloween mask on, TJ. <laughs> okay, he's, he's got a mask on for a reason. Uh, Birds prey like hawks and eagles like to prey on snakes. And what they do is they, they, they lunge down on the snake, they, they grab it with the talons, and they peck the eyes out. That's how they sort of render a snake helpless. And so what happens is this snake has a mask to hide his eyes from the prey. So he's got a little bit of chance that the snake might, the bird might miss his eyes, and he can get away real quickly. We'll, we'll get this out and hold him in a second. Real pretty snake. Okay, last one. I brought him because he's very large, and people tend to think snakes, big snakes, more dangerous. But this is really a beautiful specimen. This is a. This is from Mexico. This is a Mexican bull snake. Pretty, huh? Pretty, TJ. You want to put him around your neck? No. I do. Okay, we'll get it up in a minute. This is a Mexican bull snake. He's not full grown yet. He's still little. He's still a baby. So we, you know, we'll, we'll keep bringing him back. Uh, uh, back, and he should grow another foot to two feet long. Much larger. All right. All right. For so those of you who would like to hold a snake, if you want a smaller one, you let me know. Uh, what we can do is just sort of hang out. When you're holding a snake, this is important. When you're holding a snake, support the body. Put your hands underneath it. You don't have to hold it squeeze it tight. Just let him lay in your hands, support his body. You don't want to hold him like this because this sort of hurts his spine. You want to hold him close to you. Just think about it. if I was hanging you over a bridge by your feet and letting you dangle like that. You'd, you'd feel scared, right? So you want to make him feel safe. You want to you sort of corral him like a baby. So we'll hold on to them in your hand, all right? That's how we hold them. All right, who's starting? Who wants the keys? Ah! You want this one? Okay. 
Now they might wrap around your tail. They like to get in places that are warm and where they can hide. So they may try to go down your shirt. They may go up in your hair, girl. So don't freak out because that's what's going to happen. All right, Benji. You want one? Yeah, the big one. The big, the big one. All right. You sort of sit. You can sort of stay seated if you want to. Just let them, just let them lay in your, lay in your hands there. Sometimes he might get a little afraid. So if he does, I'm close by. Black and red snake. Pass this one out. Who wants to go on hold? <laughs> Who's the guy that's interested? It's scared. You want to you want to come? You want to hold the tail? This one was pretty darn interesting. You want to hold the tail? <laughs> Just hold her. You hold her tail. Just let her lay in your hand. Let her lay in your hand. No. No. <laughs> I'm going to hold him. He's not going to get you. Look. Look. 